Welcome to the Indian Writers Forum conversation with the eminent writer Nayantara Sehgal. I'm Geeta Hariharan. If I were to describe Nayantara Sehgal's lifetime work of several books of fiction, non-fiction, her journalistic writing, as well as her interventions in public space, the word that would be the most accurate is political. In fact, she has said that I cannot write if I do not write politically. She has said that politics is not some event out there, but her emotional mainspring, even if she's writing fiction. Nayantara Segal has just published a new novel called when the moon shines by day it's been published by speaking tiger and like much of her work this is a sharp almost brutal political take on the india that is being transformed before our eyes thank you nantara for joining us i thought uh, we would begin with recalling the idea uh, of India that you were witness to, your own family, your uncle Nehru, Gandhi, uh, you actually describe it as the glittering aspiration called India. So would you start with that so that we have a context for talking about today? Uh, yes, I, I think uh, what I meant by that <clears throat> was uh, the struggle for freedom under Mahatma Gandhi in which my parents were involved and in fact my father died of his fourth imprisonment under British rule and this was an amazing period in Indian history because I think it was the first time certainly the first time in India and definitely the first time in history where class and mass fought together under the same banner. It mm -hmm. had never happened before in any country. Gandhi brought together people in a way that cut across religion, region, class, gender, all the divisions. And so he created uh, what then became the foundation of independent India. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was such an extraordinary achievement uh, to bring together this rich diversity, but which had been very diverse, mm -hmm. uh, into a unity which became the strong political unity that overthrew the British Empire. Mm -hmm. You speak of a, a, you describe the solidarity then as a rugged idealism. Uh, you've used extracts from your mother's uh, prison diary. Um, since we are hoping to also talk about what sort of solidarity we need today, uh, shall we revisit uh, how that solidarity, how that sense of inclusiveness happened? Well, it happened in the way that I have described, uh, where there was the, the star of freedom. And uh, all these people were invited to join uh, in that uh, march to freedom. And it was a long march, uh, 25 years or 26 mm -hmm. years, uh, in which people of all classes uh, joined uh, and it was really the first classless venture that ever took place in any society. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to emphasize that because it was an achievement uh, which was unique. It had never happened before and it took place because through Gandhi people like us who uh, uh, had perhaps never had any communication with the rural areas or the masses, then uh, 
were uh, involved in organizing things together. Uh, I know my mother and father spent most of their time in rural areas. And of course, my uncle uh, Jawaharlal Nehru traveled the length and breadth of India speaking to village audiences. Uh, Gandhiji himself did that. And um, it was the first time that brought town and village together, uh, English speaking people with people speaking the regional languages. Uh, and the slogans were across the board. Uh, there was uh, Hindu Muslim Ekho. There was uh, Bharat Mata Ki Jai. <laughs> and uh, Nehru often asked his village audiences, Ke iske kya maane hai? What does this mean? Mm. And then they would talk about what is Bharat Mata? And what do we mean when we say Bharat Mata Ki Jai? And there was also the slogan, In Khalaab Zindabad. Mm. So across the board, there were these slogans which were all radical of their kind, emotional of their kind, and people of all classes uh, were together marching, young and old also. And together. that India, that was uh, uh, the idea, uh, what they saw when they said uh, Bharat Mata, um, uh, we, you know, uh, was secular, not uncontested, but what held people together was that it would be inclusive, it would be secular. You know, if you could uh, tell us something about, uh, not of course Nehru's vision, but the vision that held all the freedom fighters together across the board. Well, as I have said, it was, uh, it was uh, this call to freedom that was the unifying factor. And uh, Gandhiji had shown that this could be done non-violently, and therefore thousands of women could join into it. Now, if it had been a violent fight, perhaps that would not have been the case. But because it was a non-violent fight, Gandhiji invited the women of India to join it. And I think in 1932, perhaps uh, about 30,000 women uh, were in jail at that time, part of the struggle. So, um, and I don't mean Hindu women, I mean women mm. uh, of all classes and kinds. One of his uh, leading followers was a, a Christian, mm. uh, Rajkumari Amrit Kaur. And many uh, uh, of his comrades in the struggle were Muslim. Molana Sahab Azad and Tayyab Ji and you know, some were Parsi. So the secularity came in the mix, mm. Mm -hmm. in, in the fact that you know people came from all religions and all backgrounds to march uh, with Gandhi. And um, well, to, to um, uh, go off the track a little, if I may say that, and contrast it with the way elections are fought today with in uh, the last election, our present Prime Minister had life-size uh, uh, mm. images of himself on mm. big screens. And I was thinking back to my childhood, where uh, uh, as a child I, I saw Gandhiji, a skinny old man, <clears throat> sitting on the ground. His voice didn't carry very far. Microphones didn't always work. Mm -hmm. But that man uh, shook an empire. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there was something very unique about India's struggle for freedom. It's secularity, it's across the board class and mass meeting. The fact that it combined all the languages of India. I mean, there are patriotic songs in all Indian languages. Uh, Gandhiji's favorite hymn Vaishnava Janato was Gujarati and through that he projected his image of what freedom meant. You know where he says that the Vaishnav is the man who can feel another's pain. That mm. was the message of Gandhi. 
And of course, his prayer meetings were a combination of Muslim, Christian, um, and Hindu prayers. And even the Hindu prayer had his mantra, which was Ishwar Allah Tere Naam. So it was, there was the secularity for you, you know, yes. right across the board. Well, if we um, sadly move from that point of glory and aspiration to where we are today, um, you know, when I began your novel, I thought it was um, going to be a, a kind of dystopia set in the future or near future. But then I realized that it's very much in the present um, where uh, you, the, about the only new label there is, is you've got something called the Directorate of Cultural Transformation. Um, would you tell us something about what happens to this glittering aspiration, uh, not just in your novel, but uh, in today's India? Yes, from uh, a huge uh, inclusive idea of India, we are now being shrunk into a monoculture, mm -hmm. which is called Hindu. But if you're a real Hindu like I am, I'm not only a Hindu by accident of my birth, I'm a believer. Uh, my religion matters to me. And so what is projected today as Hinduism is a travesty of Hinduism. Hindutva is a distortion of mm -hmm. Hinduism. But that is what we are being shrunk into mm -hmm. from this huge enriched sort of inclusive idea of India. And that's what's taking place today. And in the name of Hindutva, these are the changes are taking place. Well, I mean, we know what changes are taking place. Uh, debate uh, has been crushed. Uh, uh, dissent has been outlawed. And we know what is happening to dissenters. Uh, there have been gunshot murders by passing vigilantes of writers and journalists. There have been mob lynchings of humble people, a poor blacksmith, uh, a dairy farmer, who are doing their jobs. And they have been lynched by mobs on public thoroughfares within sight of the police. Mm -hmm. And Hindutva is keeping quiet about it. There's even a travesty of justice, an insane travesty of justice, I have to say, when the killers of all these people have not been punished. And the, the killers are roaming free to kill more people while the victims or the victims' families are being declared the guilty party. So this is the change that is taking place before our eyes. And this transformation is not in the future. It's happening now. All of us are looking at it.